Welcome to Bulletproof Mindset, where we help you bulletproof your mind through health, fitness, and entertainment. So in today's episode, it's the longest episode to date. This episode is jam-packed with information, talking about current events, whether before and after pictures are overrated or underrated. We then talk about the addictions with drugs and how it's similar to the addictions of food. We talk about why I was up at 2 a.m. and decided to start my day. And then we talk about all things religion and the purpose of life. So today Today's episode is jam-packed with hard-hitting questions and I'm sure you will enjoy them. But before we continue with the episode, we are personal trainers, so if you're looking to work with one of us, check out the link below to our consultation forms. This can be in person and online. We also have a Facebook group called Bulletproof Coaching, so if you're looking to join that, it's a private community filled with weekly challenges, live Q&As and much, much more. You can join this for completely free. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Oh. Right, up at three this morning, you crazy bastard. Yeah, have to. <laughs> I know, I know. So if anybody's watching, uh, I woke up this morning, opened my phone, checked TikTok. Or, no, I checked, I seen I had a uh, notification for TikTok. I was like, fuck's sake, I replied one at the time. Was it, was, it, was it five or six? I was like, have to? What? This is, I, I, I just, it was ten, ten and three. I was like, what? Is he, is he all right? Is he all right? <laughs> So I think this is where it's maybe more confirmation of like ADHD now the TikTok you sent me, I was laughing at that. Um, but I woke up, I went to bed fairly early to be fair, it must have been about quarter past eight. I'd started it, I was in bed and I was starting to fall asleep. And then I woke up for a pee at like two, quarter past two, half two, I think it was. And my, like I was peeing and I was just like that. Straight away the first, like normally I just go, oh, Yes, it's only two. And seeing all the time, I was like, it's two. And straight away, my brain went, let's go to fucking work, do this, this and that. And I was like, ah. and I was lying there, and I was like, nah, shut up. Like, just the normal thoughts ah, yeah, that you yeah. have in your mind. And I was like, nah, I'll go back to sleep. So I'm lying there. And then I'm going, nah. I'm wide awake. Aye. And then I was adding hours up, and I was like, you've had about six hours sleep just now. And then I was just like, ah. I'm not going back to sleep. Dressing gown on, showtime. So <laughs> went downstairs. Um, I didn't need a coffee, but I made one. I was just like, I'll have a coffee. <laughs> I knew you would laugh at that. Bro, I was going three in the morning. Aye, I have to, have to, I made it. Mate, come on, <laughs> get a grab for yourself, man. But again, I'm not drinking coffee to wake me up. I'm drinking coffee just because it's a wee ritual of, mmm, nice wee warm drink in the I morning, get you. right? I get you, I get you. So then I, was, I had like a good solid two hours of, of deep work on my business. Good. Um, building out a programme, so probably announce it here first that I will be launching a six month program that will be very well detailed with weekly messages automated in it, um, messages guiding you through each of the workouts, what to swap them out for, what to do it for, so I'm putting a lot of detail into this um, and I'm hopefully going to release it in the next three weeks or so. Um, so who's that for? So starting strong, I would say it's actually for anyone. Anyone? Mainly for people who are only following a workout routine and want yep. to try it out. Yep. And I'm gonna I'm gonna offer a guarantee in it. So a bit of pride and a bit of integrity that I've got in it is the, the money back guarantee, similar to what I do with my PT and so I know this probably opens up for more people to take advantage of it, but you'll get access to the first thirty days. If it doesn't work out, you don't like the coaching experience, blah blah blah, then cool, get a full money back um guarantee. Guarantee, yeah, full refund, no questions asked, just need to send an email in. So I need to work out the price, I need to work out a lot of other stuff. Build I'm building the website and all of that stuff just now, but I'm excited to launch it. Good. I've just paid for the premium trainer eyes. And it's I seen that last night. Aye, so it's building the brand, it's building the app, so it's gonna it's quite exciting. So my brain was that's what it was. Nah, it was like yeah, it was like showtime. So I sat down and I was doing I was replying to client messages at 2 no, morning. I was like, ah, I forget that this actually pings notifications. So ah, hopefully yeah. I never woke him day up this ah. morning. I think everybody's got that sleep mode on their phones these days, though. So. Hopefully, hopefully. I know, hopefully. Um, yeah. So I'd done that, and then I found myself just, I was like, you know what? Because I, I found myself, I was really, I started like scrolling a wee bit, and that's how I was on TikTok, and I replied to messages, and then I was like, fucking put the phone down and just utilise this quiet time. Aye. And I think that's a good thing. It, like, I think that's why like you always look at like millionaires and successful people and they're like, get up first thing in the morning, do this, do that. I don't think it's the value getting up. I think it's just because there's not many distractions. Aye. The house isn't awake and everybody's Aye. sleeping, so you're like, it's quiet time. Um, 
could have like recorded content and I was going to do a couple of voice notes to some clients and that, but I was like, nah, I'll just focus on the, the admin side of things. Right. And I got a lot done. Good. I got a lot done. So I um, might go to bed early tonight and try it again tomorrow, but I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't even think I go to bed that early. <laughs> Could you, what, it's seven, eight? Nah. Nah? I don't know, I just couldn't. Especially on the light, do you struggle to sleep in the later nights? Aye. Man, I, that's Aye. the best skill I've got. Aye. So I kind of woke up at six this morning, I did fall back asleep just, but I was that way, I was like, I was on the verge am I going to stay awake, am I going to go back to sleep? Like, I'm not sure here if I'm going to stay awake, go to sleep, back to sleep to seven. I, was, I wasn't sure, but I did. Some mornings, you're like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm up. I'm, <laughs> I'm up. ready to go. Sometimes I just lie there, but I'm, fuck it. <laughs> It's interesting, isn't it? I don't know, like, because last week, like, you wouldn't find me doing this last week. No. I don't know, last week I was relying on Jillian's alarm. Like, my mm-hmm. alarm would go off at five to five. Sometimes you get in that flow, mate, and you go. No, honestly, it was, because psychologically, in the back of my mind, I was going, Jillian's alarm's going off at half five, I can lie in for half an hour. I was going, well, why not just set your alarm half an hour later, if you wanted the half an hour lie in? So I've been a wee bit more stricter to that this week, and I've got up and uh, on my first alarm and everything, then... Today. It was quite cute. C- Cooper came down about four and he's like, ah, shaking his tail and all that. And I was like, no, he's, he's, like, he's like that. What, what are you doing? What are you doing down here? <laughs> and he wouldn't come up to the dining table. And I was like, oh, maybe he wants me to lie down the couch. So I, I sat in the couch and he jumped up and he, and he cuddled in. It was the cutest thing ever. And I was just lying there and I was like, I could go back to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go oh, back to sleep now. Because it was like five past five and I was like, I need to go up to the gym, I need to work out. And then I had a client in it, uh, eight. And I was like, damn it, man. I was like, I'm going to crash. I'm going to crash. But I feel good. I worked out. I know. I've done squats. But it's all right. If you crash, if you crash, you're, 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 you're going to crash, you're going to crash anyway. Aye, uh, we'll see how we go. So I don't think, I don't think I will. Like, I've, I've always been the most. I'm ready for a crab anyway. a deal later. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel good. I feel good, but I think it's one of the things, a one off. Like, it wasn't planned. Aye, aye, you could If, you, of it, if yeah. you tried to do that again, you'd be like, ah. If I planned it, I'd be like, ah, then, come on, let's hurry on podcast. <laughs> 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 How was your sleep, Shite? No, I sleep solid. Oh, I, thought, I thought you would have had a crap sleep because of the wind and stuff. Cause you're... I, it wasn't the wind at mine. Was it no? No. Because I was going to go. I, what Thank I was fuck it, wasn't he? I woke up and then I was, when I was contemplating whether to get out of bed or not, I was like, you know what? So, it is, so I don't have a problem when it's windy, I have a problem when it's wet. Oh, it's really got her, that's what it is. Aye. So I was lying there and I was thinking, like, do you want to get up? And I was like, you know what? Go out, go out, walk for fifteen minutes. And no joke, I, like the wind, I could see the trees they were flat, <laughs> Aye, <laughs> horizontal. Yeah. And I was like, I'll just make a wee coffee and I'll sit down in the. In I the did it. I, I slept right through to six, so I don't know. Feeling right now. Aye. Good, good, good. Right. Overrated, Today's underrated. Overrated, underrated. Happy boy. Good topic of conversation. Before and after pictures. Ooh. Ooh, that's a very spicy. That is a very, very good one. Before and after pictures. Overrated, underrated. <sighs> In what sense? For for who? Well, that's a good point because this is where my for advice who? would change. And I'll t- let me give you a wee bit of backstory why I'm bringing this one up. So on a consultation call the other week there, and um, the lady that's working with me was, um, she's got religious practices and stuff like that and she was asking me a question that how do I measure results now you know me I've never been one for the before and afters but all power to my clients who are like posting them they're like look look at this transformation awesome Aye. love it because it there's an element that spurs motivation can I recognize the hard work you're doing for me I just I don't and I was having this conversation with one of my clients the other day as well and I was like if you clicked on my page and all you saw was before and afters what would that make you feel and she was like it probably would have pushed me away because I hate she she her words is she hates seeing like like girls in like her words were like skimpy like bra and pants and stuff like that and I can see where she's coming from but I also see the other side and I went through it myself but back to the story of consultation and she kept asking me how do I measure results and I was like well it depends, it depends on the person so we can go on feeling we can look at strength numbers but we can we can have a goal as well mm-hmm. and I got down to the question it was because um, through her religious practices she didn't want to send another man like maybe revealing revealing uh, images uh, yeah, I can understand and, that and totally. I never that has never crossed my mind however is that, that's one of the first uh, things that crossed no, my mind no no like in, t- in the sense from a religious point of view oh, right, usually right. when I'm when I've got a new client like I never even got to this part with her yet um, but usually when I've got a new client especially the girls even the guys I say to them I go look the, a, a very good source of your starting point is pictures measurements and weight right. now 
With all that, that's your staple. You put it to one side and then we'll review that in a couple of months time. However, with the pictures side of things, I know that can be a wee bit invasive and maybe not comfortable with it. So you don't need to share that with me, but I would definitely recommend that you take in good lighting with like plain background, a front shot, a side shot and a back shot. Yeah. Because I, gu I guarantee you that in three, four months time when things are hitting a bit of a lull and you don't see much changes, we go back to those pictures as a reference and you you're see like, massive fucking, changes. wow, look at me, like, who's that guy? Who's Aye. that girl? So that kind of kind of got me thinking, I was like, I wonder where, because we've went back and forth on the over on the the topic of before and afters and stuff like that. I think, um, I think I'm slightly changing on it. I'm starting to get more clients doing it. Good. Eh... Uh, you fucking sell it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could say it's overrated or underrated. I think some people can definitely overrate it. So this is why I brought it up because I knew it would be a good conversation. Like try to do this on a fucking sixty-second reel, not a chance at all. No, talk. no, no, no. But I think this is a good long topic to to talk about. So I've started asking my my clients this question. Would they like, see? like I know as a fitness entrepreneur to, to grow my business, one of the best marketing tools you can have before and is after. before and afters. Yeah. With that being said, for me, my message isn't about aesthetics, so I feel I'm going to try... I'm, that's why my testimonials is someday it's just a good picture of someone and it's the writing blob. Now, I've got a few... Well, I've not got a few. I've got a lot of people who have, like amazing before and afters and I leave my clients to post that so if they post that and they tag me cool I, I'll put it in my testimonial folder yeah. um, and I'll share it and stuff like that I just don't like to personally I don't like to post it from my point of view because um, I feel it might be a wee bit too contradictory to the clientele I've got because um, how they came on to me to start with yes there was an element to look a certain way and look a bit better but it was always look I'm trying to better my health here yeah 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 and, I understand that and I found myself when I was posting before and afters and I was like that's you weren't happy with yourself no not even that as I when I was coaching so I, bef I posted look at me here right. and look at me here aye, blah, aye. blah 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 and then I was like that's not a good message either because what I was saying is that I'm saying to people look at me here uh, no, like I'm not doing very well blah 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 but I'm in good shape mm -hmm. but I'm not I'm not communicating that on my social media aye. so then a client who's overweight and no good, good health practices good relationship with food they were like fuck that guy like he looks amazing in that picture and that's because I had my own bias you always have your own bias and in your head. own head aye. so I think that was more of an insecurity side of things that I didn't realise that was actually turning more people away from the help that was trying to make yeah. so um, so, aye, so, you, so you're saying you're changing your your opinion then a little bit slightly on slightly yeah I think I think it's silly I remember having this conversation with a few RPT friends and one of them saying well what why would you not show like the amazing work that's been put in? Mm -hmm. And I get that point as well. I just think for me, I'm gonna I'm doing it a wee bit different. And like I think you need to stand by what the clients that they have are amazing. And I think that might be down to one of that. That's one of the reasons that because of no marketing like that. Right? Do you get me? They've came in. They've stuck to everything I've told them. They're loving strength training. They're no for fixating on their looks. They're still losing weight. If that's if their goal's losing weight. If their goals to gain weight, they're still gaining weight, and they're not fixated on their looks, mm -hmm. but they're still looking better than they ever have, and probably looking looking at it from like if we're sitting, if I've never really looked at it too much into this, but if I'm sitting to talk about it right now, it's probably because I've never marketed myself like that. Yeah. Do you get me? So all the clients that I've got, they only whatever on my social media and whatever they hear off me. Is what they is what they go are going to go after. Mm. So I've never said that the goal is to look like me. The goal is to be have a That's big right, chest, yeah. big shoulders, big big legs. I say yeah. the goal is to be strong, healthy, and happy. And you will look better. I tell them that you will mm. look better. But the goal is to look be strong, better, and ha happy. I say your goal is not to lose weight. Your goal is to feel better. Yeah. And I always say that to them. So see if I was putting up like, oh here's a picture when they were sixteen stone. Here's a picture on the twelve stone. Then. You are, you're putting out, uh, you probably are putting out that message the goal is to lose weight you know what I mean mm. but my cl the clients that I've got they are not like that the goal is not to lose weight the goal is to feel better and in turn they lose weight yeah do you get me and this is where I'm, I'm really conflicted with it's, it I'm confl I, I, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's, the same time, there's no right or wrong I, no no there, there isn't a right or wrong it's, and I think it just goes back down to who's the clientele you want to attract <laughs> but the, the reality is most if not all clients have some kind of goal of losing or changing their changing their appearance is probably a better 
phrase to use. And that's where it, it, I find myself sometimes, and I'm like, I think should I should I be posting that? Because I've got I've got some amazing ones. I've had a guy who dropped twelve stone, like when I worked with him in my garage right into gym twenty four. And it is unreal the before and after. But I'm like. Look, I sent it to him. I was like, look, there's yours. Like, it's up to you if you want to do I that. I think the good thing the way to look at it now is post it. But then when somebody comes in, you go, look, yeah, he done that. It looks better now. But I told him at the start, look, you've got to be healthier, stronger and happier. Yeah. Or, but, however, you communicate it and go, that wasn't, that he only achieved that because of this. But I think that's one thing, like, see all the testimonials that I'm posting just now, mm -hmm. there's great physical transformations behind it. But, it's maybe not always sexy and it doesn't sell as much, but I think I don't know, for me, like if all my if all my profile picture is these amazing transformations and there's nothing like I said, there's nothing wrong with these amazing transformations. Me when I was looking for a coach, I was on my coach's page and I was looking at before, oh look what you done for him, look what that high. I'm gonna go with that guy. So I've been the fucking I've been at the other end as the client. Aye. And that's what that's what uh, solidified me going with this coach. And now what I realise is going with a coach who has a base and before and afters doesn't mean they're a good coach. And I think that's why, I think that maybe that's what's stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, right, how do I attract one? How do I attract my target audience? Who is my target audience? Yeah. My target audience, yes, there's an aesthetic goal there. But the main thing is stronger health, understanding food, understanding the gym, workouts and education. Yeah. And I just think on a before and after, for me, that doesn't really, that communicates a very small part of what I do as a coach. So whereas I post a testimonial with a with more writing behind of it, might not get as many views, might not get as, get as many likes, but to me that holds my integrity. Do think it's maybe time to change it? Integrity. Hmm? Do you think it's maybe time to change it? Change what? Change how we do it. Because I, I, I think it's, prob it's probably time, because I don't, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with it, as long as... Oh, you mean before, post before? I, 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 I actually think there's nothing wrong with it, as long as the coaching is still the same. Do you get me? Yeah, I think for for me, I'm probably not still going to, like marketing wise, unless, I don't it's know. It's got to be very rare for me, I, don't, I still don't really get a lot of clients to do it, the pictures but part of it. I think this is why I wanted to bring it up, because I, I wasn't sure where you stood on it, but I know I know amazing coaches who do it, so, like, and this is what I'm trying to say, it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean The problem that I find with pictures is you get really hyper fixated on it, don't know yeah. about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find the, 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 there becomes an unhealthy obsession with the pictures. I'll tell you firsthand. Like, so. and I, 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 I've been through it. Like, I've been the guy who takes a picture here, a picture here, a picture here, and then puts them beside each other. I'm going, oh yeah, I look better. And in that, see that moment, you feel fucking amazing. You're like, fuck man, look at that difference. But then a week later, you're like, I need that done again. Like, I need that feeling because there was no, there's no better feeling than that. I mean done. But there's, but there's no better yeah. feeling than seeing yourself. But then. It's not about that. So this leads nicely. I wasn't sure what to call this overrated, underrated, but I was going to, mainly it was the weekly pictures, was that's what I was going to, I was going to say, like, where do you stand on that? And to me, online coaches push weekly measurements, weekly pictures, weekly weigh-ins. Yeah. And I think there's demographic of a, a big chunk of people that that goes okay for. Aye. But there's also a lot of people that that does more harm than good. Um, and the conversation I had with a client recently, I was like, she was telling me what she was doing with her old coach and I was, she was weighing in every week and I was like, I was like, why every week? She's like, I don't know, but the skills were annoying me when I wasn't doing that. And I was like, did you communicate this? And they always take a pinch of salt with what a client says because I know clients have left me and they'll be bad mouthing me and mm. shit like that. But um, what I was like, right, there is a, there's probably a bit of a, an, no, an, I don't know what the word I'm trying to look for, but as an online coach, there's only so many ways you can measure results. Aye. But no, like, it, I feel like a lot of people run the, they don't find it sexy going, oh, look, I've got this person squatting now. Instead of going, look, I've got this person lost £10. Aye. Weight loss is, is what attracts everyone, Aye. for sure. It is, it is, um, it is. So on, the, on the, the picture side of things, I vividly remember taking my weekly progress shots from my coach. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you're fixated on it. And let's be honest, see, when you're caught up in that realm and you're, you're doing it every it's week. It's not nice, mate. It's not even that. You, you're looking at the pictures and you're like... I can't see anything. You don't really see anything because you're seeing yourself so often. I think pictures from a starting point to the end of a block. So absolutely. do you know what this? This actually goes very well into the mirrors thing. Mm -hmm. I fixated less on my looks in here because there's no mirrors, and I, f I don't take pictures really much. I don't, I don't say I don't take pictures at all. I do yeah. take pictures, but it's very very rare. And do you know what? See, after a day, I'm like, I don't feel fantastic. Yeah. Like the the feeling, a good picture leaves pretty quickly. 
because what happens is you take a good picture, you show people, they go, oh, that's amazing, that's amazing, that's amazing, and you got all this validation. Not even that, then you're hooked on your social post you, and you're scrolling, you're like refreshing you, every 10 you, minutes. And I remember it well, you got hooked on this validation, I was like, you're doing so well, you're doing so well. And then you post the next one, and I was like, ah, you're doing good, you're doing good. And then it's like, ah, you're doing, you're doing you're, you're, you've always been Seen doing, it before, aye. You've always been doing good. And then you're like, fuck man, like, nobody cares anymore. It's like when we first, the first episode of their podcast, views, straight Sky. through, when you consistently deliver it. That's alright. Nobody cool. cares, but then, but then that gets in your mind, and I'll always remember it. You're like, why the fuck is nobody caring anymore? And it's no like they should care about me, they should care about me, but you're just used to it because when you post your first transformation picture and it's a good one, I was like, wow, well fucking done. So when it comes to, aye, it's good for the PT to show off, and it's good for the client, but it's very, very easy to get fixated on pictures because, as we say. You look at it at your cell and you take the next one, you can't really tell the difference. That's one. <clears throat> if you play, decide to post it, your first one will pop off and you get that all that validation. Next one, it won't. And you'll be left feeling why. But then there's also the element of if being so fixated on it, the start the, you're looking at these shortcuts to get the the time frame even shorter. Aye, so aye. you're like, right. Let me let me get a pump before this picture. Ah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let aye. me let me put some makeup on before this picture. Yep. Let me get the best angle. Let me get the best lighting, and it leads you down a rabbit hole. And this is like Jordan Syatt's post that I shared the other day. His Q and A's, and somebody asked him, he's like, should I? What, what would you say to somebody that wants to drop their carbs before their photo shoot? And he was like, well, unpopular opinion here, but why don't you just have your carbs and take a picture how you normally look? No. Ninety nine percent of the time, rather than that's a one percent deleted. That's it? what these, yeah. these these photo shoots, right? And you you're in the best shape of your life, and you get a picture with the best camera and the best lighting. You're looking at that. You look in the mirror, and that's no you. Mm. That's no you. That was you for that was you for a very very short amount of time. And I think, but that's no uh, you day to day life. So how are you going to feel good when that's your picture? And I think that's what leads to insecurity. And that look, I, I've got so much empathy for because let's be honest, like. Guys, I can you see the guys that pop up and they're coaches or they're just fitness fanatics and their profile pictures is the the picture of them where they're they cut down for a photo shoot, they've got their photo shoot taken and then that's their picture. Mm -hmm. But then I've see, I see them majority of the time when they're posting on their stuff and I'm like, that's so dramatically different. Mm -hmm. For women it's even more escalated, but I think that goes out there's a bigger there's a bigger challenge, I believe, for women on social media we make up products. Against and each just other. so much like aye, aye, the aye. whole the whole thing. But that, that, there's, that's a bigger, probably, there's a bigger aesthetic pull for women. Aye, that's that's the main reason behind like the uh, the reason why I don't like it now. I loved it back in the day. Like go, you scroll back a good I two was three hundred. I was the same. Honestly, I think if you go into my personal one, I bet you I can because I don't post in my personal one that much. So if I swap over here and I've scrolled down, there we go. One, two, three, four. I've, six rows down. I've no made a before and after picture in about ten months. I've took pictures, but I've never put them to before any of my other pictures. Now this was, I'll show you one here that I fixated over. So this was me, I don't know, must have been about two weeks out from my show, right? Right, right, right. right. Fucking look jacked. I've turned the sharpness all the way up Aye, in that picture. That's what I used to do. So no, but this is what I want to say. Like, that picture was a good picture, just naturally taken. But you have to enhance I'm taking pictures every single week. Enhance, enhance, enhance. I remember looking at that picture going, that's not good enough. Aye. Look at me. I'm kill for that right now. Like, aye, aye. being perfectly honest, being fixated on my aesthetics. But there is, there is, there is healthy obsession, and then there is like fixated obsession. And I think that's, I just think that's what I feel like. You have to go down it for for a lot to really truly understand. <laughs> it. You do. I was trying to communicate that to him. I was like, shut up, man. Like, look at me. I was a fat piece of shit there, and now look, I'm fucking. I, I look amazing in this aye. picture. Absolutely, testament to your dedication. You've you've killed out your nutrition. You've stuck to your calories, but. What happens after it? Because that's what that's what that picture doesn't show you. The Aye. rebound. I gained twenty two pounds. If you've got an unhealthy relationship with food or something like that, the, the high likelihood is you're going to have an unhealthy obsession with pictures, scales, all that. If you keep doing it, do you know yeah. what I mean? And I'm not saying that everybody will, but uh, there's a high likelihood if you've got an obsession with something, mm -hmm. then when it comes to fitness, it's very very easy to have a obsession with like pictures, etc. Yeah. So how like spin this round then? How do you how are you creating a healthy relationship with your clients with pictures? So first thing is you you have a larger time scale, once a month, once every two months, right? 
that's the only time you're allowed to take a picture. You need to be disciplined in yourself. Like, I'm not taking a picture any other time. You start taking pictures all here, there and everywhere, then you're, you're just, you're allowing yourself that failure. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you don't want to hit failure just for the sake of it. And then you go to say, did that actually make me feel good? But did that actually make me feel better? Did that actually make me motivated? Or did that make me feel worse? Mm -hmm. And so I've got somebody in who take it with the skills. The skills are making I feel way worse. So the skills are in the bin. Aye. Skills are in the bin. I said, fucking put the skills in the bin. They are severely damaging your progress to where you actually want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, you, want, you want weight loss, but you don't want weight loss. You want to feel better. Everybody wants to feel better. So see if you think, I want, I want weight loss. If I, you think, if I lose 10 pounds. No, no. If you feel better, then you'll lose 10 pounds and they bother. Ah, uh, you might lose 10 pounds, but you won't feel better because you already don't feel good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And hers was the scale. And a few people, it is the scale. And then, but if, you, but if you go into the pictures, then it becomes the pictures as well. Yeah. So if you're fixated on the skill, then you're fixated on the pictures as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and this is this is what leads to the the whole message of chasing aesthetics. You're cutting corners to get to that all goal. All the time, man. And then as soon as you hit that goal, you then think that is the only way to achieve that look. Aye. So whether you're then stuck in this yo-yoing phase, and aye, there's there's so much of a topic so, to get into. But I think it like when you, for one, it's a great marketing tool for coaches, right? Absolutely. And I think that's why it's used. Two though, it becomes too much of a marketing tool for coaches, where coaches then like for me try and get the best pictures aye. quickly and, and I think that's why a lot of coaches do boot camps and that's why they do hit classes and hit workouts and all this sort of stuff and there's very little emphasis focused on building good foundations good strength training good sort of resistance training programme then pulling the lever and all these other cardio elements which is still good for your health but I think because there's no value within that within that first block of training or whatever it is like it's I don't know it's, it well, you've, got, you've got to look at the like for women especially, they've got this face tune and all that. Like, you look at Lassie's pictures, and I didn't even know this until a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, that they edit all their pictures. And it, it see if, if a woman does that to her face, then how's she going to feel about her body? Yeah, and I think that, that's where I don't feel that the message of before and afters is helping that situation anymore. Aye, aye. I think it's great to celebrate what's happened, but I think, I don't know, like... I don't know. I'm I'm very compl I'm very conflicted with it. I've got an, like on my head. I stand by what I'm going to do for me, my business, and like if it wouldn't if it wasn't working for me, I'd probably have a different opinion here. Aye. But it's working for me just now. So mm -hmm. all I can do is keep sticking sticking by it. Mm -hmm. and I know, as I said, I know great coaches who use it mm -hmm. and utilize it well, and I know they're fantastic coaches with their clients. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're a you're a bad coach. But no, it doesn't mean that at all. I think. I just think like it's a good topic to talk about because for the average listener that's listening and you've seen all these before and afters, the one that fries my nut the complete most is not even taking in the same place, same position, same posture. I can tell you right now, I can sit in front of a picture, slouch my shoulders, hunch Aye. my body over, breathe out. Turn the, light, turn the light off. Turn the light off. Take a picture, stand in the same spot two hours later. Turn the light on. Get a pump out there no, turn and the, stand on. Aye, and, turn the light off. And get that look exposure. as if I've, I've had a... Uh, Ten pounds of muscle gain and fifteen pounds of fat loss in in one day, and that's where you can. I always can tell when a coach is playing like that. Bullshit. You're comparing apples to oranges. Aye. Like that makes no. Like you're talking, and, and then I don't know. Like sometimes I even look at some progress pictures as well, and I'm thinking bullshit. Not even bullshit. I'm just like you've just exposed somebody there. Like is it that is just, there's no a physical difference. Aye, aye. Like, but just posted. <laughs> it's just delighting. Bad, and I'm like it's great that that person's got that. But it's you're, just delighting. You're, I don't know, just it's like the exposure and skimp. I don't know. It's a hard one, mate. Nice, it's overrated. Really rated. I think moderately rated, but you need to know where you stand. I was going to say moderate. I was going to keep it. You need to know where you stand in everything that we said there. Like, are you, if you got a bad relationship with the scales and how you look, then take your pictures, put them to the side, focus on training for strength, go back to them in three months' time, watch what's happened. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to, to what we were also going to talk about, like client wins, because this ties nicely in. Aye. So I took a client on about August time, weighed herself, took her pictures, measurements, yada yada. We're just about to update our pictures, so and I'm saying three months here, but the relationship that this person had with the scales, with years, years and years of every diet fad under the sun, every cardio element, Aye. to the point when I was like, you know what, Let me, let's just go, because the goal was this uh, wedding coming up um, in June, and... We had an abundance of time to play with, so I was like, put scales to one side. She didn't listen, she kept weighing herself, yada, yada, yada. So what are we, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months in, right? Mm. In January, she weighed herself and she's like, 
kind of seeing my weight's not come down anymore. So it came down a total of, I think it was two kilo, right? It's two kilos and since August, a lot of people like that. I'd be wanting a way more than that. But I said before, this is the same person whose waist came down 10 centimetres. And I said to her, what, what do you want? Do you want your body shape to change or would you rather the weight come down? She's like, both, but I'm actually, I'm actually really happy that I'm done that. So we're just about to update measurements in March, which is gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of our whole body, because we only done our waist that day. But the reason I'm bringing this up today is because I finally convinced her to have more calories. Got her to like, put her trust in me. And she's like, I hear everything you're saying. I'm going to trust this for four weeks. And I'm like, Go, just two, 200 extra calories than what you're having. Aye. I don't want you to care about the weight. You've still got an abundance of time for your, your date that you want to kind of lean out for or whatever. And uh, she didn't wait until next week. She weighed herself before she came in to see me the other day. And she's like, I know what you're going to say. Don't be mad. Like, step in the scales. And I was like, all right, what'd they say? She's like, I've lost four pounds. How has that happened? And I'm like, well, there's a number of reasons why it's happened, but less food doesn't always necessarily mean better results. Aye. We need, like, you were so low in terms of your calories. We had to feed you some decent nutrients for your body to process and build the leaner muscle in the phase that you're in it, in your training. Um, so I wanted to share that because it's, I know how frustrating it can be, but the best thing about this is she sees it. She's now got the validation and social proof or the proof that it works. So she's even more trusting me now. She's like, right, cool. Hi. What are we doing next? Let's go. So, so she's got to find a fine tune. So just when you're talking about the pictures and stuff like that, she hated, she hates how I look. Can I ask her? I was like, like, do you want to do a testimony for us? And she was like, yeah. And she's like, and, and I, she was the one that asked about the, the like, what would you, how would you see me as a coach if you went on my page and that? And she said, it's not for me. And I was like, right, cool. Because she is my ideal client. She fits into that category. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. And so, so that's the feedback for me. And again, back to the point, take it wise, like, is it time to change for me? I'm probably in a space where, I've, I'm, I'm happy with, with aye, the aye. so I've, 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 I've had a client since July or August as well uh, so when it comes to her she came to me she's like I don't want to lose weight I don't want to gain weight I just want to get strong I just want to get fit she's like I cycle a lot do a lot of hang me I was like that's fine but I'm going to give you your protein because she was telling me how much protein she had I was like that's not enough so I gave her a goal of 200 grams right so I let her do it she was always getting stronger our cycle was always we never weighed her though because she's like, my goal isn't weight. I was like, that's fine. I'm not going to weigh you. I'm still going to check in with you. I say, as long as you're happy, then I'm happy. She was feeling better, feeling more confident. And then in January there, right? So she, she just loves training me. Changing her strength training. I was like, here, look. Is, do, you, do, you want, do you want to see going into this new year? Do you want to do you get any weight goals? Do you want to lose a bit of weight or do you want to gain? Like, do, what's, your, what's your thing, mate? She's like, no. I was like, so how much calories? Eat? She's like, I've started tracking. I was like, how much calories? Eat? She's like, 16. I was like, <laughs> you're joking me <laughs> you're joking me you're a fucking maniac I was like right well, well, well we're gonna we're gonna change that so she was sitting about maybe 90 kilo right I was like we're gonna go up right so fe- she's lost 5 kilo I'd be going up in calories we're going up in calories right then the same she got stronger on everything right she's more confident and I was like like the, the goal wasn't to lose weight Aye. the goal was just to up calories but naturally it gets ready a bit of more water weight you're it's actively moving better exactly because you're protein intake your energy's up exactly so you're not feeling that sluggish feeling as often I, I was like uh, but one thing I said to her how are you getting 200 grams out of 600 <laughs> calories I was like just people, pure protein people struggle to get like uh, <laughs> aye so with that I was like this is going to be a good a, a fantastic uh Example to use to our clients. Mm. Look, she was doing this. She upped the calories. She lost five kilo. The goal wasn't to lose any weight. Mm. The goal was to only up her calories. Yeah. See how she feels. She feels much, much better. And that byproduct. And like, see, she still has in her mind as well. Or oh, if I eat a wee bit more, I'm gonna become a fat bitch. She says. <laughs> I'm like, don't use the words. I don't like the words. But when I'm with my clients, we, see, we have a laugh. Right? I just told you. She said they had what? In fact, she said a fat cunt and she was like I can't believe I've just said that word and I was Aye. like why are, you, why are you talking to yourself like Aye, that that's what I said I said stop call, like, I, I like to have a laugh with my clients but I said that's one thing we don't do we don't downgrade ourselves to that, that level but she's like I still sometimes think I'm that person she's like I know I'm no but she said if I put on two hundred extra calories now she said I will feel it mm-hmm. I said you know what we stay there then I said if you're happy and she's still losing like a pound a week and it's insane and you're, you're telling these clients go up and they're like no 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 I'm like look here, here's this person Genuinely, their goal. They, I can come and tell. They can come and tell you. I was they trying to lose weight, <laughs> and I lost five. Uh, nearly a stone. Yeah. Nearly a stone. I know it's great. I've got a client who 
um, when he came to me. He'd never touched weights before and he was a very endurance type person. Mm -hmm. So I introduced him to lifting weights and I was like, these calories got him to track. It was about 1,800, 2,000. When he went off and won, it was like 3,000. I was like, 3,000 is where I want to try and get, get him to. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm thinking in the back of my mind. And he might listen to this, so mate, he'll know who it is. So I said to him, like, your goal's 2,400. He said, what? He's aye. like, aye. And he's like, right, cool. And I asked him two weeks in, like, how's it going? He said, I'm fucking loving that. Oh, right? So we are about five or six weeks in we've now got the technique down of our compound so we're now adding load like really going for a, a good two to six rep range and I, I said to him I was like how's it going he's like I'm fucking starving I was like on the 2400 calories he's like, he's like aye and I goes good let's go up to 2800 he's aye. like what I was like honestly this is a signal your body's saying feed me we try to grow here aye. Like this is a really like uh, the hunger signal you're feeling, especially with the amount of food that you're eating. It's already. genuine hunger. It's aye. This is again because the thing is he's very good with his protein, very good in terms of his routine and his, all that sort of stuff. So and this is the thing, it's like adding rice to a meal. It's like just that extra four hundred calories. There's so many different ways to do it, but just by implementing a wee bit more sauce, cook butter with some of your foods, like, mm -hmm. and that's going to allow him to build more muscle, which will change his body composition. But even better, this is the missing point. Like when you're increasing calories, to cut and lean out is so much easier yeah. because you eat more food than what you would normally do and yeah. where you're currently at. So yeah. if I had to cut him just now, 2,400 calories, 1,900 calories would be his cut. Yeah. But I get him adapted to 2,800. And if all things are good and we can go up to 3,200, I can get him cutting it 2,500 calories. It's crazy. Mental, mm. what, that, that is more sustainable, enjoyable, yeah. and just overall healthy, in my opinion. Aye. So a, a lot of people forget homeostasis as a certain... There, there is a certain point where your body wants to be in homeostasis. Homeostasis just means your maintenance. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when you're eating such little calories, you're not allowing your body... Too to, much stress. Aye. To ever be, aye, too much stress to ever be at your actual homeostasis. So if you're 1600, then your body goes down to 1600 sometimes and it just sits there. You feel shit, you move shit, you don't lose any weight. Mm. And you're like, how? And so I need to go down to 14 hours. No, no, no. Go up to 18 hours. You need up to, to rebuild. You need, uh, you need to recall. And then your homeostasis goes up quicker and you're like, mm. I'm actually losing. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? It's crazy. Mad. Uh, right, I want to bring something up. I was on, obviously I'm mad. I can't believe what. I've had a 12 hour day already if you think about it. <laughs> it's yeah. ten, no, no, it's 10 o'clock, but aye, I've had. That's eight hours. I've, I've, I've had a work day. Aye, I'm, aye, I'm aye. finishing my work you're day. A, you're a crazy, <laughs> cut. You're a crazy bastard. I think I've got clients in. Whenever I get clients in today, I've got clients right up to about eight o'clock tonight as well. Aye, a bastard. I'm going to be. Mm. Come four or five o'clock and like that. What did you say? <laughs> what was that? Was that, was that your fourth rep? No, that was 12. <laughs> um, anyway, so I was on Instagram, right? Mad shit in the world, like this is where TikTok and Instagram just baffles me sometimes. So a drunken man in India, Aye. right? Out his face, like Aye. I don't know if he was just drunk or he was on drugs, climbs the enclosure of a lion's den, jumps in it, and he's been caught on video, and he's walking up to the lion, and because he's out his face, he's trying to tell the lion what to do. Best bit about this whole thing is the lion actually is like this guy's fucking men. <laughs> I'm a gun needle. But it got me thinking, like, it's quite mad how animals like that, you wouldn't, like, some that, like, I feel like they can sense fear sometimes. So it's like a shark. Do you know how you're meant to react when a shark comes at you? Punch it. Are you meant to put your hands on aye, its nose it, and it goes away? Aye. Because it's fighting back to it. Aye, but aye. I don't know what I've got. So it led me down the rabbit hole with bears and stuff. But this guy's like, <laughs> so much confidence. And he's just like, he's like, add to it, clicking his fingers and he's going, over there, over there. And he's like, swaying about. And the lion's like, who, who the fuck's this guy? Is this is this guy for real? Like, I could kill this guy in an instant, but see, because he's got so much confidence mm -hmm. in his actions, there's no fear in him at all. I feel like animals can sense that. Aye, aye. Um, so then the next one came up was a bear, and the, the, like, the guys explain, if you come across a black bear, like, you you've uh, don't run, don't panic, just slowly edge away from it, make yourself be seen, all these things. You th like, the opposite of what you would think when you encounter a bear. And I was thinking, so, and then he goes, like, if he still charges towards you, you're fucked. You just need to lie down in the fetal position and hopefully you've got a backpack on and it just keeps clawing you and then it just gets bored and goes away. However, if it starts to get your organs, then you just need to go for it. You need to try and fight it. And I'm thinking, I'm like, that's quite mad. Literally, the next video I swiped to was a guy and he's like, so he's, it must have been his girlfriend or his fiance. Has he gone, wah! Like ah, he's like, ah, ah yeah, yeah, he's yeah. walking back and he goes, 
Babe, go over to the left side, and he's so calm and collected. But it, it, man, it got me like the shivers in my Aye. back. I was like, "What would you do in that situation?" Because one, I'll do anything to protect my family, like my wife and things like that. So I was thinking, I, I, I actually put myself in this guy's position. I was like, "Ah, because you do, you like as the guy, you feel like a bit of, like I need to do it." Going fist to fist with a fucking bear, bear. but the guy's like, "Babe, go over that side." And he's, the bear's looking at him, and he's just slowly walking back. But I'm like, you, "You're seeing how close he is to it," and I'm just Aye. like. This is fucking mental. Aye. What would you do in this situation? I don't know, man. I don't know. I remember when I crashed my car at 60 miles an hour, and this is what my wee cousin said to me. You're pretty calm for that. Because I just felt like, oh, oh, oh no. When I went through the barbed wire fence, sat there and just went like, fuck that. <laughs> and he's like, you did. And we just kind of sat there for a couple of seconds and went, Oh well, may as well get it. <laughs> go out the car, man. The car was all the way under. I was like, oh well. Oh, so I think when like things happen, I think you just whatever happens, fight happens. Or flight. Whatever, fight ha- or flight, whatever happens, you don't know. I don't think you you can never ever ever. If something like that happens, you'll never be prepared. You just do what you do. Aye. Do you get me? Whatever your natural instincts are today in that situation, you'll do it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I just that like I did, I just think we were so lucky. Sometimes I'm like ah. Oh. I'd love to live somewhere else, somewhere nice and warm. And then I see shit like this, and I'm like, no. Scotland's pretty good. Like, what's the what was the most wild animal we can account? It's like a fox. If, <laughs> aye, it's like if you're in Australia, man, like a wee spider can come and bite you, you can die. Oh, oh, the, not even a wee spider, man. Aye, a fucking Same big size. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you with bugs and stuff like that? Spiders oh, and that. I don't mind. I like spiders. What do you mean you like? Right, them? So this is this is something really strange. And you, let's see your thought about like psychology. I read that if you, I don't, I don't, I, I can't even mind why. But you I get hate, a stronger bench press if you like spiders. But I, I love spiders. <laughs> I love spiders. <laughs> but I hate these spiders, right? And I joined a Facebook group that posted all these spiders and they love spiders. The mayor, I looked at these spiders and the mayor, I zoomed in and looked at them and I was like, oh, look at that wee guy. You're looking at you, wee bastard. No, but I was like, oh, look at that wee. That's a, that's a cool spider. And then see when I would see spiders, I'm like, oh, that's just that. And then I wasn't, I wasn't like, oh, there's a spider. I'm like, oh, there's a spider. And I could also just go. See if I seen a spider on the wall. I just go, well, it's gonna go away because that's what they do. So, like, I was wait in. Wait a minute. The- wait a minute. You don't. You don't get the spider out of the room. No. Well, I'm just sleeping and it crawls into your mouth. No, and it crawls up your nose. Or- no, but that's not what they do. No, but. Uh, there's a stat there. I don't know how true this stat. This Never is bullshit, it. mate. What, this is urban myth. I've mate, like you hear sounds. this in primary school. <laughs> I know, but it sticks with you, doesn't uh, it? Aye, aye, aye. But that's what I done. So I joined the I joined the Facebook group that posted all the all the spiders for, di- for everywhere. Posted them in, say what do you think this is, and they would tell you, and they tell you what you could do, and then see when you see a spider in person, because I was so used to, used to I, I just kept going on it for days, because I read, if you look at something so much, you won't be scared of it. So I looked, and I, I was like, see, next time I see a spider, I was like, oh well. <laughs> it's so strange, but see, like bees and that, I hate bees, mate. Bees, wasps, bees, fucking hate them. I think it's because back in the day, I was sleeping, and a wasp flew in and went under my head. Or I was sleeping last and I moved like that and it stung me like three times. I was like, yeah, fucker! What, can't, what the fuck's that? I feel like I've been shot in my sleep. I'm like, what the fuck? And you know what? I was just lying in my, ooh. Uh, I've, she's just speaking about this. Like, I remember those little, what they call the, like, the wee tape worms they sat under bricks, like the wee shells in the back of them. Mate! I hate oh, them. Oh, wood lice! Aye, wood lice, that's it. So I remember like, I hate the house. I, this, is, this is going back to like primary seven, first year, and I'm lying in bed got my shirt off oh. then I'm lying on my back uh, lying on my front and I'm going oh, my back's a wee bit itchy <laughs> and I'm like ah, oh, it's a wee bit tickly and I, I do that and then I look and there's just one of them sitting there and it cre- like that is like creeped me out they are I the hate- most rotten wee things ever what is the point what's the purpose of they're the- meant to eat like magnesium in that oh man like see like, that, the iron in that for uh, the fair that's all they do that's how they hang me under they just crawl about <laughs> They that's are the same with spiders for me. Like, I, I'm not creeped out with spiders, but I need no, to get so, rid of them. So spiders eat the other bugs. So if you've got spiders, you're you're good. <laughs> no. No, no, no. See, see my couch. If you've got spiders in your house, right, and there's a couple of spiders, then they're eating the rest of the bugs. If you don't get any spiders whatsoever, then there's bugs. But see, Cooper, about. Cooper will go up and he's like, what's that? <laughs> he eats them. Yeah, so yeah. he eats the spiders that eat the bugs. Yeah, I'm yeah, all yeah. good. To be fair, I've never seen a spider in my house since we got Cooper. The last time I remember, we, just, eat we just got our L-shaped couch, right? So it's a big comfy couch and we were Aye. lying in it. And it, my heart jumped out my chest. Like, we're lying, we're watching a film, and Gillian's got her arm, like, so I'm here and Gillian's to my right. <laughs> and the, the spider crawls over the couch cushion on her shoulder. <laughs> and she's like, ah! And then I'm fucking, ah! And it's disappeared and we're like, where the fuck is it? 
couldn't sleep on that couch. So they couldn't go back on that couch. Oh, come day. on, mate. So, aye, that, I'm, I'm not creeped. I'm not that, I, I, I removed them and. I, I, don't, don't, I don't mind them anywhere, but I used to hate them. And that's did, why I didn't. Did you what? kill them? Ah, I was just standing on them, aye. Oh, do you? Aye. Fuck nah, I put a wee thing in. I'm like, on you go, pal. Bro, came into I'm cold tarthied, mate. <laughs> I, fucking fuck you, you're a fucking mum. <laughs> oh, you've got veins! <laughs> <laughs> Step your way Say bye to daddy <laughs> <laughs> Aye bugs Bugs are Just spiders by the way But no, nah, Dead grateful for living in Scotland Because like, nah, we, we don't have to deal with That much shit. Nah, nah Cockroaches nah. Well, I assume you go to Tenerife Or something like that as well I hate <laughs> that That's the kind of things that I hate That's the kind of things that I hate Aye. Right so Going to go into a bigger topic That Basically I was thinking about the other day what I've been through in my life and it kind of goes into like addiction and that so a couple of things that I learned for taking a lot of drugs to not taking a lot of drugs or not taking drugs for a very very long time and basically rewiring my brain was it like life's boring? <laughs> <laughs> life's quite shite when you don't take drugs when you're taking a lot of drugs when you're drinking a lot life is really boring you're like there's nothing else to do but that I know I'm joking when I say it, but I no, no, I know. Is, there is like a dark place because there's an urge to then go back to the, so, the element of like, oh, before you that. come out of that like if you're a week or two or three or a month then life is really fucking boring and but this so drugs are obviously addictive but there's other things in life that are addictive that aren't drugs like we're obviously going to get into and this is the biggest thing that I learned when it like so we're going to take it into when it comes to food addiction because food addiction is massive for many people but this is one thing I learned from taking a lot of drugs and then seeing how life is like when you come away from it for a long time. Yeah. And then you need to come away from it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So when you're so high for so long and taking loads of different things, pff, like, like you just kind of float through life. Yeah, you're numb to everything. You're, you're numb to a lot of things, relationships, emotions. Like, I was so emotionless that, like, I think I only cried once in my last relationship. Like... After it, like it was like two and a half years, I think I only cried once. Mm. I was so emotionless. And that was a time when I was like slowly coming away from it all. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was slowly taking like I was so emotionless. Like things just didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. But they did, but not on the surface. Aye. So and then what the main thing I realised is the boring things in life aren't boring. You're just too overly stimulated mm -hmm. to actually enjoy them. So and I was like, What I, I can enjoy just go to the gym and then just go home and have normal food. Like, what? I can enjoy just waking up and having a normal breakfast. I don't need to go to McDonald's to enjoy the, the goodness. I I. So I was like, fuck, man, like, is there more to this than just... Aye, there's more. Then this is why, like, psychology plays a big part in everyone's health and fitness journey. It does. Um, massive, because massive. it's not just about the element of consuming less calories. Yeah. It's the, it's the behaviours behind it. Behaviours and everything that we do as human beings, like, as a species. Like, there was on... It came up in my... Uh, my Instagram and they, was, they were comparing a study to people who got therapy and people who just got a coach to uh, a nutritionist that's what it was and the people who kept the weight off more was people who went to therapy and dealt with their issues as opposed to just the nutritionist that gave here's your meal plan follow your meal plan good to go whereas the the therapist is right. getting the behaviours getting, getting right down into the, into the, the trauma. problems aye and, and addressing that so that's where like so the reason that I was going to speak about this is because the reason I took a lot of drugs was due to childhood trauma mm -hmm. and what I've realised recently is I've still got a little bit of that there and I know what I need to work on now mm -hmm. when it comes to personal training people their food addiction comes from childhood trauma mm -hmm. and whether they like to admit that or not and do you think it's always trauma though or is it more just behavioural stuff patterns behavioural patterns and look when it comes to severe food addiction it's got to be some sort of trauma otherwise you could change it I, d I don't know I think for me I wouldn't say I've, I've got a, f a few clients that are coming to mind just now and I just know it was the that the reason they've got cravings at night is because of the years of them just eating what they want at night time. Aye. When from, from such a young age that now that they're like, I can't get away with just over consuming my calories and having a full Easter egg before I go to bed, you know aye, what I mean? Aye, like, aye. So aye. it's like, where's the urge for the Easter egg? I don't know if that for me, maybe, maybe it does, maybe we've just not got to that side of the conversation, but um, I think a, a, another side of this to look at would be just that's always what I've done but I've always been look, sneaking see trauma isn't just what happened to them it's what happened to their parents mm. or what happened to your parents so what you got to look at why were they eating easter eggs before their bed when they were younger 
Why? For, for me, like, do you I, get me I, though? I, so I was, I was always a snacker when I was younger. Yeah. And I wouldn't ask my my mum or dad or stepmom stepdad. I'd rather than asking them, I would tiptoe and I'd sneak down and then I'd sneak some food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. And that's just. I think every kid would do that. I know, but like I generally, I can rip the arse out of it. Where I'll, I'll, you've seen me, like I've devoured, like, like, like when I got that wee muffin for you, and I got a pack of four, and I was like, I'll give, I'll just give him a pack of four. And I had one in there. That was old instinctual things that came in. That's not. I wouldn't say for me that's. So see when I when I looked at, I would be. If you look at it uh, deeper, so one of the reasons why I started eating a lot of shite is because I wasn't eat, allowed to eat a lot of shite. I was severely restricted as a child. Mm. So like, my mum was like, you're not allowed juice, you're not allowed chocolate. And I was like, well, I fucking want it. <laughs> so I'm going to have it. Aye. So severe restriction can be traumatic to a child. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. But I, that, when you said that, it's actually just brought a memory back for me from my granddad. Um, my granddad passed when I was young, but this was, must have been about six or seven. And I was sneaking into the biscuit tin and I was taking them. And he sat me down and he's like, ah, did you take biscuits for there? And it's the first time I ever went, should I lie about this? Or should I just tell him? And I was like, ah, I did. And he's like, I'll never tell you no. Like, you don't know, you just, you just need to ask. Aye, aye. But I still done it. And I don't know, what, I wonder where that comes from. Oh, see, I was saying, like, if you look at trauma and that, it doesn't need to come from you. It can become from, a, like, generations before. Mm. And that's where, the, that's where a big issue for food can come. Do you know what I mean? You've got to ask yourself, why, why do I eat at that time? Mm-hmm. Why does this food taste so fucking good? And the whole point was, everything that I found born is no longer born. Yeah. And what a lot of people say is, how can you eat like that? That's so born. That's so born. How can you only eat that? How can you only eat that? I'm like, it tastes really good. But it didn't used to taste good. Mm-hmm. Man, I used to sit with a Chinese and iron brew on a Saturday night. And then I used to go to the shop and get sweeties. And that used to taste really good. If I'd done that now, that would not taste good. I would not feel good. Nothing to do with it. And it's because I had to change my behaviours completely. But what I also done is I had to change my mind completely. I had to go through certain things. And then I was like, you know what? I actually don't mind doing that. Because mm-hmm. a lot of it comes from the bigger aspect of life is, look, wait, why, why are you doing these behaviours? Yeah. And this is a bigger subject, but I just like to look at it. I like to go people, I like to say to people, look, if it's not working for you, then there's possibly a much bigger issue at hand because if you find that you can't eat boring foods then you need to come away from it for a little while and try and go right re-stimulate yourself re-stimulate yourself it's all about re-stimulation uh, so a lot of, I've had a lot of clients go through this journey where they go away from takeaways that they're, they're used to regularly having and then it gets reintroduced because there's an urge for it and then they bring it back in and then they're like that was horrible I can't believe how shit I feel after it Aye. and it's like this isn't it you've just changed you've actually just got used to how shit you felt before mm-hmm. and that was just always in there so you've now seen you've got to see experience what what feeling good or Aye. feeling better feels like and now you've got a comparison to that bringing you down as opposed to being down at this lower desensitised state all the time Aye. Um, but I think that, that I think the other part that's not necessarily trauma related it's probably the engineering of oh, food, food as oh, well, like 100%. It's really, did, like I don't think people understand how much money gets into spending, how it feels, the texture feels in your hand, how it tastes, from the, the smell, from the, the, pa- the color, from the, the size of the packaging, from the color of the like, packaging. It's, it's so, built for you to pick it up. It's so engineered to get you to go. That was fucking awesome. I want more. Um, and like the the ingredients to make up whatever it is. Like this, oh, it's, it's hard. It's and hard in when this you look, when you take it back to drugs, drugs these days, mate. See drug dealers, they'll be sending you deals. <laughs> Do you know no what I mean? Way. Valentine's Day deals and all. Shut fish. up! No, I swear no, to God, they're but becoming true what, entrepreneurs. Oh, oh no, they're the biggest entrepreneur. Like a lot of people who don't are no in that circle won't understand. But we used to get a menu, and the menu had all the bright colours, and it was like. Two what for this, drug, five for this. Drug but, menu? Ah, you got a drug menu? Ah, it's class. But that the, is the, so funny. But look, look uh, the, the, the drugs are being more engineered to be, be sold. Oh, I, I tell you, see, if I'm a drug dealer, I'm going, you want to try this for free? Because I know fine well, most drugs out there is it's a hook. Like exactly, you exactly. So like, if you if you take anything from that, it's learn that you are so sensitized, desensitised to good food that it is boring and it doesn't make you feel that good at the start. But... You need to give yourself a lot of time to, to, to sensitise yourself back to normal food. And then it becomes a point where you get to a point and you go, I don't want that. Mm. That's not what I want. Like, see, like, I was thinking about that last night. I was like, I don't want a Pepe's. I don't want a Nando's. I don't want a M- McDonald's. I don't want a Burger King. I want my chicken and rice that I've made yeah. because it's tasty. Because I've made sure I pick things that I enjoy. 
for one. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you do. But it's I know how good it makes me feel. Aye, so I think it's the it's it's correlating the feeling for me because Jillian just went through this. She had her birthday, and then the week after she had something on. The week after that, she had something on. So she'd been eating out for like three, four times in a row. Aye. And this is when you know you've kind of broke that seal because she's coming home and she said to me. I can't wait just to get back to normal food. Ah, yeah. And I get this feeling when I assume we were in Mexico, all inclusive, enjoying myself. I'm making good choices, but I'm also overeating. I'm there to enjoy myself. Oh, I think, aye. depending on where you are, my advice would be different to you. But for me, I'm enjoying myself, I'm having drinks, and it's a honeymoon and all that sort of stuff. See, towards the end of it, see the guys who came over and visited us from New York, like mm-hmm. they were in their fitness. And obviously, Americans are a wee bit different, but he's like, I'm going on a tea detox, get me back into that routine. And I knew where he was coming from. It was more of actually miss eating normal, like good food, lean, whole food. Good, eh? And I think it's because you understand this this kind of lethargic type sluggish feeling is associated with ultra processed stuff and ultra processed stuff is healthy to have from time to time yeah but if there's a consistent basis of it you can see how it gets out of control easily um, easily out of control i'm baffled you get a menu <laughs> and two for one deals valentine's day special what a half gram of gear <laughs> that, that, that Mate, blows it's, my mind it's fucking it's fucking crazy how but everything's engineered these days so what would so obviously like i feel like drug dealers aren't they the same type of drug dealers you would look at in films back in the day no i look at some drug dealers i'm like you ain't getting if i'm buying something off you you ain't getting that back you ain't you ain't taking me out thing, but that's what I, like you got to, so, but the I'm, reason the reason people day pay up is because you want more so, but my question was going to be like who do you do you feel like drugs is as tarnished as it is and kind of frowned upon do you feel it is as um rightly so is that a bad thing or do you feel like like how would you for somebody that's in that situation do you think it's the drug dealer's fault or do you think it's the the social circle like where would you put the blame so if you if you look at addiction as a whole you change the environment you change a person if you put somebody through rehab and they go in the same environment then they'll be the same person mm. do you know what I mean they'll go back to their old ways so <sighs> selling drugs is obviously not ethical at all and it is an, once it becomes an addiction to some to a degree it's like it comes an illness like you are so addicted to the point where you can't you are never in control and then you go to ask but I I, I, I can I know there's some ethical drug dealers out there who go mate you've, you've, you're done do you know what I mean really yeah there, there's not a lot but there, I know there will be some out there who go mate like come on like no, I'm not selling it to you yeah. do you know what I mean and I think I think there is some people I know I've heard of the people some people doing that like going mate you're no buying off me because as a drug dealer if you are selling to a lot of people all the time, you're making enough. Mo- you're making more than enough money. Uh, but I know. So I've <clears throat> I've trained a few people that, that have punted before and maybe did punt in different parts of their journey. And well, it's not my job as I'm there to train them, so it doesn't matter to me. Like it wasn't. But I was curious and and built up good relationships with these people and like some of them were making crazy amounts of money. Yeah. And it wasn't the selling of drugs that then became the lifestyle that they then adapted to because they're spending... Then they become addicted to the lifestyle. 15 grand a month, mate. Aye. 15 grand a month. You start spending, you're like, what the hell? Aye. You ain't making that for a part-time job. You ain't no. making that for like many jobs at all. No. Unless you're in an executive senior position or you're running your own business. Um, and it's funny, I've like, just seen like, some of these people that I've trained that no longer train, but um, some have got their own businesses now and I think it's done well for them to... They've had like a big scare and then we went completely off it and I see them like try to make it in the business world now, which is it's quite interesting, like how that's to be fair, they're probably more skilled than than uh, average person because they understand like logistics, cash a, flow and all there's that. There's a guy in Lad Bible and he's like older guy from London, can't mind his name, but he's good to watch. If you th- if you type in bald gangster Lad Bible, <laughs> it'll, it'll definitely come up. Uh, but he says I'm a businessman. It just so happened that my business was drugs. Oh, I have seen that. Aye, seen he's that, like, yeah. I'm not a drug dealer. He says, but my business was drugs. And he's like, I'm a businessman. I make money. He's like, it just so happened that more, a lot of the stuff that I sold was drugs. Mm. And But he made fuck tons of money and he got out it. So because think, he was a businessman. Do you think, um, on the subject of drugs, do you think it's as bad of a, it's a, bad of a, of a thing for society than what people make it out to be? I think it's a terrible thing for society, mate. You think so? I think so, yeah. I think a lot of people are just stuck and then life is always going to get hard. Life is always going to get hard. So if you're in, yeah, I'm taking it in moderation, what happens when life gets hard? 
you don't take it in moderation anymore. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like food. Yeah. It's like food for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have a takeaway once a week, once a week. What happens when life gets t- hard? Twice a week, mm-hmm. three times a week. And then you're in the habit of you're feeling worse because you're eating three takeaways a week. Yeah. And then you're four, five, six, and then you've got no money. And it's all a downward consumption. It's all a yeah. downward spiral. Like, you go to ask yourself, why are you taking drugs? Mm-hmm. So I had to ask myself, Matt, why am I doing this? Do you know what I mean? Why am I going out and I'm taking coke? Do you know what I mean? And I, I, what was it for you? What was it for me? Was it because you didn't like yourself? Didn't because like I went through, I genuinely went through a time where I just didn't enjoy life, so that was a get out. Yeah, yeah. But then, and I would wake up, I'd feel the same as what I would Monday to Friday or mm-hmm. similar. Mm-hmm. But then when I was feeling better and I was doing better, then I would do it and I, I would wake up feeling terrible because I enjoyed my Monday to Friday. But then there's an itch, an itch to get again do you know what I mean I, but as soon as you what I'd always find is and this is me personally if I took it on a Saturday night by the Friday I was I was I didn't I didn't want to take it but I was mere annoyed do you know what I mean I was like fucking fuck this cunt I'm like, who the fuck are they talking to do you know what I mean I would snap at people quicker and this was six days later and this was me resensitising I was either going to date again or I was going to Black break break, it, yeah. break the cycle but I would know that it was happening because I'd, I'd remember I'd be in the Chinese and I'd be like, people are pissing me off tonight. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck it, people are pissing me right off. And it'd be me resensitising. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Aye. That is a bit it's interesting. bad how it messes with your emotions and this goes for food. This goes for just any addiction at all. Like Aye. How it does because you're like, nothing matters in life. And like, this goes probably for um, fitness as well. Like, people, there's some very self obsessed people who. Like you probably get a tendency as well, and I know we've had conversations about this, like to to use that as your escape now. And that's a, that's a good escape, but like things where you go, you should be dealing, and you're like, no, I'm gonna fucking beat myself up. So we, I, we, we, spoke about, we spoke we spoke about we spoke about we spoke about that the other day, and I was actually sp- 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 saying to my client the other day, she was like, I can't, I can't remember what she said, I won't go into it, but she was like, with certain cut coming up, I'm going to train me. I was like, don't. Aye. I says, there's one thing that I've learned very very recently is if you've gone through anything. Let yourself take that time. Process it. Process it. And then you'll be a better person when you come out. I said I said to her, I said, look, this is what's happening to me. I said, I could train five, six times a week now. Absolutely. I'm in a deal with I said that to her. I'm in my deal with I could train because I want to feel that feeling. But I'm not going to. Mm. Because simply I need to do life you how I was going to do it. You need to deal with it, yeah. I, I need to deal with what I'm dealing with. And I need to just live life the same. If I change life, if I have distractions, then I never ever deal with it yeah. and life stays the same. Yeah. So I said that to her and it was certain it was way, way worse than my situation. But I said to her, I said, I know it's hard, but train two times a week like you're doing, move like you're doing, don't see that overtime, don't take it. Mm-hmm. I said, and if you go if 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 must is you're gonna go home, you're gonna cry about it, then do it because there's other ways to bring practices into play though, isn't it? Aye, I, I said if you're gonna go home and feel shite then like that is that is a wee bit of life, but I can I can guarantee you when you wake up a couple of days later and you've cried it all out and you've actually processed it and you've sat and went, you know what, this is what's happened because of this and this is why I feel like this, but I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Because once you process it and once you get the sadness out, you give yourself the plan going forward. Yeah, because you start to climb, you start to climb as that yeah circle or hole. Yeah, you need to let yeah. yourself go down to come back up, and it's true. Mm-hmm. So see if you just keep yourself balanced. It's going to become a point where you just slowly stay here. Yeah, that's my opinion. No, you're right. You're right. That's why I brought that up because, like, you people go, "Oh, like, I'm, oh, nah, I've never taken drugs. I'm not, I don't have an addiction." But everybody's addicted to something. Like, you spoke about porn before. We spoke about like the f- getting addicted with fitness, right. drugs, drinking, um, going out all the time, all this sort of stuff. It's very, very easy to get addicted to fitness as well. It's very, it's easy to get addicted, addicted to anything, but fitness is so easy because. Oh, I'm sober. It's healthy. I'm sober. I'm it's healthy. Seen as healthy, yeah. Then you know you're training six times a day, and all we think about is the gym. Six times a day, wolf. <laughs> six times a week, <laughs> but all we think about is the gym, and that's what I used to do. And relationships get like you. There has to be balance across everything, and uh-huh. this is why I was saying like there's times to bring in processed food. There's probably times to do drugs. Like maybe, maybe I, I wouldn't like I wouldn't know. Maybe if I go to Amsterdam, for example, ah yeah yeah yeah, like the 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 fruits of their laws and stuff like aye. that. Um, but like in like in reality, you need to you need to understand like where is your end point. So you found that or what that is for you. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are just going through that, whether it's in nutrition and stuff like that as well. Yep. Right. So one to they say today? Uh, yeah. It's, as of tonight, it's Ramadan. Yep. So happy. Well, I don't know what you say. What do you say? You say I have no idea. Very 
well practiced. I've no this. idea, mate. Um, but Ramadan starts. So the reason I want to bring this up is because I have a few clients who um, are going to come into this um, religious season here and they will be a fasting element, so it means training has to change. Yep. And I was getting asked a lot of questions. I was like, you know what? It's probably actually good to communicate in a podcast, like mm-hmm. what you would do. Regardless, like if you are... Um, religious or not you're probably going to take something away from this next part yep. so it starts from today lasts for a whole month um, and I want to go over like some some of the advice I, I was giving this person so this person was working with a coach as well and I've had a few other clients that came from other coaches and it's funny just how like when you're not when you I can tell these coaches don't come from a religious background because there's no there's no grace given to it at all. It's like, fuck you. Like, would you mean, right, okay, you're fasting, right, you need to get this meal in then. You need you need to do this. Um, so I was getting asked, like, what's my opinion on it? And I was like, to be fair, like, I want you to, I want you to be the, the driver. I want you to decide, going on your feelings, like, what is it that you're hungry for? You obviously, you've had experience of knowing what high protein foods are, low protein foods, but the ball's back in your court. And for this period of time, I think the main takeaway for anyone listening to this, like if you got an event coming up in your life or you've got some sort of religious practice where you are put in a position where you're, you're, you're fasting, um, then that's the important part. Aye. And the rest of it is just fueling what you need to do. Now, I know you were saying, I think it's like eating like at two points through the day, but you don't you eat from like sunset to sunrise, or that's the window that you're allowed to eat. Um, and that, that's fucking hard. Aye. Like So then to say, right, you're hitting your boot camp work at 12 o'clock at night, can let's get it. Aye. No chance. No, no chance. So what would your advice be somebody who's going into a fasting window? How would you, how would you like tell fasting them to... Fasting window, Ramadan. Ramadan. Right, so... Which basically is it? It'll be a window of fasting on each day. You pick your calories and protein that you can have in two meals. You've got to have one before bed, one as soon as you get up. Now, obviously, it's going to be really hard to eat that one when you get up because you're probably going to be pretty full. Mm-hmm. So your one before bed is going to be a bigger one. It's going to be hard as well. You're going to need, obviously need to get into that rhythm of... You're probably going to eat less calories at the start because you simply can't eat too many calories and try and sleep. Yeah. Uh, but go. this is what I was thinking as well. This goes against what we usually say for fat loss. Usually we say eat protein first, eat protein last. Right. right. Eat your carbohydrates and your fats first in the meal, especially carbohydrates. So if you've got a big meal, say 1,200 calories, and you've got all your carbs, your fats, and your protein, if you, I would I would have carbs, fats, and protein in your two meals. I would have them for I, I would definitely say going as far as having it well balanced. Yeah. Um, Interesting, I with, with the protein. Some people will be different as well, but see on the thing with adapt, uh, like your body adapts to the new. It's like your circadian, circadian rhythm when you're changing your sleep pattern. So you're going to adjust to that, and then your uh, food windows late, and your, your hunger signals. The first week is probably going to be the hardest, hardest part. Yep. But you get into that routine, um, and it's it's probably like it's probably like I've said before that fasting for me. I've done that in the past to really disconnect from. From some some sort of food, just to kind of get my sense. Like I thought I was starving there, and I feel like I was going to die. But at the end of the day, it mm-hmm. passes. And I think that's why, like all religion, has some element of fasting in it. And I think that's where benefits come from. And it, it does is like there's elements say your white blood cells and all this sort of stuff. The, like the, it the it simple like, discipline in no having. I think it probably goes further for that one. The, sim- I, the simple discipline of you just know giving yourself the satisfaction of eating whenever you want. Mm-hmm. You know so, what I mean? So that nutrition side, what would you what would your advice to be somebody who trains? So first thing in the morning, like after you eat, like maybe a one 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 and a half to two hours after that big meal, or before that big meal, depending on how early you get up, mm-hmm. that's when you train. Train three times a week. Strength strength train. But understand, like we spoke about in two or three episodes ago about progressive overload. You're not gonna do a lot of progressive overload, yeah. you're gonna stay pretty your training's got to be pretty linear. All you're doing is focusing on maintaining what linear you've got. Again. <laughs> linear again. <laughs> linear. Linear. <laughs> oh, you've <coughs> nearly died. <coughs> oh, you're... <coughs> what are you doing? I just want to, I just want to see you cough. You're, right, uh, you're good to go now. But all you're doing is looking to maintain. Yeah, no, definitely. I think the there is a misconception this isn't your time to make PR gains and strength no, no, gains. No. But listening back to that episode, maybe change up your programme. 
work on mobility, Aye. work on movement, work on your skill technique. Like that will go further than try to hit PRs in this stage as well. And you'll feel good because you're ticking the you're ticking the workout part off. You're you're still boxing. And the thing off. is, if you work on mobility and you're maintaining, when you go back to your normal way of living, mm -hmm. you're gonna be a fucking monster. Aye. You're gonna be ready to absolutely smash it. So a lot, I don't know, probably a lot of people are going Ramadan. I'm not gonna train the same. I'm not gonna put put the effort in. Just don't train as hard, but yeah. go, I'm going to do four days a week, but I'm going to do three normal sessions, all maintaining, and then I'm going to do a mobility day or two mobility yeah. days, and I'm going to be an absolute animal when I go back. Yeah. Exactly, because it will set you up for a, a stronger um, a stronger recomp when you when Aye. you come out, regardless of how that was, because I think I'd, I used to train a few, uh, train. I, uh, sorry, I used to train a few, friend, uh, few guys, um, used to manage a few guys when this time of the year we come up for them and really good friends and stuff like that and man so oblivious to like just other like I don't know what the word you would use like un what was the word I remember getting asked an interview question I was like I don't actually know what that means but how wasn't it like how religious you were it was how oh come on help me out here I don't know mate no. I don't know what you're trying to say I honestly don't I don't know what I'm trying to say either like <laughs> sorry, like how much do you like? How much do you know about different? How diverse are you? That's it. How diverse? Like something along those lines. Eh? Right. Like how do you know people with different backgrounds and all this sort of stuff? Not to do with religion, but just everything in general. Right. And I'll say the first time cultured. is cultured. I cultured. That's the word. Thank but you. I didn't know you were looking for that word, Peter. Honestly. <laughs> I, I, was I like, didn't know you were looking for that and word. I was like, culture. What does cultured mean? And I was like, I don't really know. Like, why? Wait, 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 why would somebody ask me my culture? And this is crazy, it's just stuck with me. Um, so starting managing, also I've moved, living in England, okay, so their cultural and lifestyles are different. 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 Aye. Their banter, their accents. Oh, like, the banter's shit. The banter's shit. <laughs> accents are even worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no worse than the Scottish, anyway. <laughs> At least you can understand them. But but So I got to experience like all walks of life there, and this was where I was very oblivious and didn't really understand this. And one of my guys in my team came in and he's like, can you change my shifts? He's like, Ramadan's coming up and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, cool, no problem. So gave him a later start so he could um, get a longer lie-in and, and, and whatnot. And every Friday, I used to treat the team to something. I came in with Domino's pizzas for the team and I was like, ah, here we go. And I'm getting them out. Never forget this day. You put it to him. And I was like, do you want a slice? And he goes, I'm, I'm fasting, mate. I was like, oh my God. So this guy's sitting in. Uh, team members to his right, team members to his left. And they're all munching. Smell of pizza and rolls and sausage. Like, and I was like, ah, but, I can't believe I've done that. But, no water, but no I know, that. I know, I know. That's what I was reading. I was like, no other liquids. But I think that's see, where the severe discipline would be. I think that would be fantastic for you. See, see the, the discipline and just, like, this was the first time ever meeting someone in person who had such a strong belief in their faith that they were able to go, it's no. alright man, it's cool. And it's fine. And even like I didn't even understand the, the whole hydration part of it. I didn't realise you weren't allowed to No, I know I was reading up and I was like, what? And um I was like, do you want me to get you some water in? He's like, can I drink, mate? <laughs> I was like, oh I'm just <laughs> digging a <laughs> hole, like, digging a <laughs> hole. <laughs> Felt so bad, but I it, it, I'm not I'm not a religious guy, but this is where like you say you see these different things in, in different parts of religion and you're like, man, there is actually value. To that there's, oh, a, there's a lot of value to that oh, so um and i am i think it's fascinating curious like still like for for me i don't know I, would you say you're an atheist this is maybe getting deep into in the subject would i'm you, an atheist i no believe in the afterlife no believe in anything at all no what do you think happens so like just flatlined black i just think i, I what about like deja vu and reincarnation no nah, don't believe it no nah? don't believe i honestly don't believe it don't believe in anything. I just believe genuinely. I've said this people have health and fitness is all I believe. <laughs> no, but I just I just believe that like when you die is when you die. That's it. Is that scary? No. No. I know people have said this before, does that not scare you? Like do you know how there should be anything else after it? I'm like, not really, because and this is where like I was speaking about before, life is so much better than it used to be. And I've always had the belief that there's nothing after. But see when I used to feel the way I felt, I'm like, there's no point in being here. But no, like you, you've all. I think everybody's got a role to win a, to evolution, and if you can bring somebody into the world and give them a much better life and give them a happy life, and teach them the ways that you think that a good life should be, then that is more valuable than anything. Mm. And if you go and you die and that's it, then that's fair dues. Like as long as I've done my job in that way. Yeah, and I think that's probably what part you were missing before was actually having a sense of purpose. Yeah. Um, yep. Bye. So. What do you nothing. think? 
I don't know. I always, I think back to when I was younger. I remember you used to pray at the side of the bed just because I seen my granddad, my granny, granddad. They had like these wee fucking no hymns or poems <laughs> or whatever, and I was like, I used to pray, and I remember going, oh, I'd be make me win the lottery. I'd love to have hundreds of money. Like five, six years old, mate. Um, older I got, and I just, I don't know. I just think, nah, I, I don't believe. I think. I just think, think when, when, you, when, you, when you, you go to I, sleep, what do you see? Depends. No. Depends what time you catch me at. Sometimes Aye, it's scary things. Sometimes it's a bit. You're, you're, that's because you're still awake. But when you're asleep and you're asleep, close your eyes. Nothing. That's what, honestly. I just that's what I just believe happens. I just believe nothing. <laughs> what about all these stories? You know, does it? You know, fascinate. So the same way I'm fascinated with like, the universe. Do you not know, get into the like where people flatlined for like two minutes and then they come back and then they're telling their experience and that. I think it's the part when they came back that makes them feel like that. Do you get me? Like, I think when you die, you do see something. But I think then that's it after it. So, like, you obviously release a lot of hormones and chemicals when you die. Like, that's facts. Like, people that have been studied. But they won't, they won't stay. And when they die, I don't know what happens. I don't believe in... What about soul? I don't mm-hmm. believe in that. No? Nah. But that's that's just my belief. I, I don't say to anybody, like, you shouldn't believe in that. That is just my genuine belief. I don't believe that there's a soul. Do I think sometimes what the fuck is that we? Ha- why is there a wee person in my head saying stuff? Like why am I thinking? Why am I thinking? I do. I do think that. Like, I don't. I don't. I, what, which, what is your consciousness? But that's that's what that's what makes me believe that there must be, not that there must be, but like I don't know. Like this is why I was telling you to watch Alice in Borderland because it's like basically it's like a it's a simulation that they end up being in Aye. and they've created this because life was just Born. they completed life Aye. nobody died they lived till they were forever and they were just like fuck we actually needed to die or have the element of fear mm-hmm. and scarcity of food and all this sort of stuff so they, they create this alternative world um, but I just don't know I don't know I honestly just think we die mate and it's, it's what then then do you think like why you exist like what is I've always thing? thought that why do we exist I don't have a fucking clue <laughs> but see if we lived on why would we just keep living on to be a different person again or a different thing do you get me so you're saying back to evolution now I don't believe in the reincarnation shit I don't right, believe so you don't believe back isn't an owl or something right so you like don't that. believe in that so would you like you must believe in something then you must have sat and thought this is what I think maybe happens I'm a big gamer so I assume like we go to the next level and we look back and go Right, this is where life begins now. Do you think we come outside and look on us? To look back? Nah. Because nah. I, I don't believe the bad shit that happens in the world would nah. still happen if that was the case. Exactly. But, I don't know, I just... Honestly, I don't believe I don't believe anything happens at all. I believe that when you die, I all these chemicals... But think, right, you sit with that feeling just now. Everyone's going to get really uncomfortable here, but you pat, you're, you're on your deathbed and that and that's it, like... That's it. Think about that just now. Like, what what happens? But what happens is you leave your memories, your wisdom, impact. and impact with everybody else, and that's up to you what you leave. Do you get me? I do, but that's where, up to where you. do you go? Nowhere. Why? Because you're in everyone else's mind. You are still there in everyone else's mind. The memories, the impact, the wisdom of you is in everyone else's mind. So you will always stay. So. When, you're, when you speak about your papa or anything like that, he'll remember his papa and he'll remember his papa. So you never fully die. Do you get me? I do. So you I, 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 I believe that you... But, then, but then I just think, like, what, like, surely something has to, has to go on. Surely something has to go on. But why surely? Go. Why, what, like, see, like, this is, like, Sutton needs Sorry, to... no, no, no. You're right, you're right. No surely or, like, because there's, there's, like, what, why would you expect anything to happen? Like... Mm-hmm. The, that's the what I'm, that's what I'm wondering. Why would, you, like why, would, why would why would anything need to happen? Aye. Is my thinking. Why it's would just any- a fluke that we've existed and we exist for a period of time? Because see if you get right into the universe shit. Oh, it's crazy. Like Earth, the Earth will no longer be here in hundreds of thousands of years. Aye. It'll be gone. Mm-hmm. And then I just think, right, zoom out from that. Like, what happens then? Like, is it just? But what you got to think about is you're one person, one person, seven billion people, right? And we are one year of billions. I understand right. that. So we are so small. So like But see when it's wiped out, like what? Like this conversation we're having just now. What's the fucking point? Like why? Do you know what I mean? Like what how are you how are you changing that in your head to go 
I just need to create the impact that I need to do. I'm with you. I'm absolutely with you. No, it's, no, no, no. It's, the, it's why I had quit my corporate jobs, why I'd done what I wanted to do. Because <coughs> I was like, you know what? I want to leave a decent legacy behind. I want to have a good impact. And looking around the, the miserable lives that I'm seeing people live is a healthier way of doing it through lifting weights. Right. So how are you communicating? Like, how are you steering away from that? Because we're, we're here. That is the reason we're here. We're here to create impact. Everyone? Everyone. But the thing is, there's like, whether you create a good impact or bad impact, you're here to create impact. Do you know what I mean? And some people are here for longer than others. Do you know what I mean? Some people who are extremely intelligent die young, but they've created a massive impact. Yeah. And like, it's just, it's, it's all about just being, learning to live a happier life. It's a hard one, mate. Like, it's no... Some deep routine. So people probably turned us off and going, I can't listen to that. It freaks me the fuck out. <laughs> it does. It freaks a lot of people out. Like, thinking, where do we go? Why are we here? Why are we here? Fuck knows. I, that's one thing I can't think. But do we go anywhere when we die? No. Well make it count. Aye, make it count. Exactly. Make it fucking count. Does it, it doesn't It doesn't fucking matter why we're here. Does yeah. it? Yeah, I know. It it's doesn't like, matter. It like, doesn't matter where we go. Do you get me? But it matters what happens the day. Mm. And the morrow and the next day. That's what I think. And that's what I've been thinking recently. Like I am a very I'm a big thinker, think all the time, like like you. So sometimes I think too far in the future. And I'm thinking right now, I need to think more in the present. And when I, th I and when when you brought that up, I'm like, that's actually think what I've been thinking the last couple of days. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, it's even more about thinking in the present. So it doesn't fucking matter where we go, doesn't fucking matter <coughs> where we've been, it matters how we feel now. And how we want to feel. I'm going to clip what you said there. And any time I see you stressed or worked up or like, like having a hard time, go, oh, mate, doesn't this matter. This is you. Doesn't matter. Remember, we're a we're a wee tiny speck in the whole history of Aye. what's going on. Well, I guess we'll find out when we're podcasting in our afterlife. <laughs> to episode nine billion four hundred and sixty-two. That's why you should make the most of your life. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, doesn't matter what age you're, 30, 40, 50, 60, 18, fucking doesn't matter. Make the most of your life. If you tell yourself, yeah, but I'm going to go somewhere when I die, you're not going to put as much effort in your life. That's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, <but> that's... <laughs> Fuck off, no chance you're getting away with that one. <laughs> All you guys that believe in the afterlife, you just don't give a fuck. No, I'm kidding <laughs> on. But I think, like, if you think that... But I think some people, I think this is why say this loosely here I think this is why religion as a whole exists for a lot of people because there is an element of something needs to happen something needs to happen my life is pointless something Most, needs to happen because then back to you like you need to create impact the answer back to that is why well, Why the fuck should I Aye. fuck it let me just go on a rampage just now do what the fuck I want Aye. no rules no laws no like no societal benefits of giving a fuck about anything Aye. go to rob a bank go to do what I want go to do you can do whatever shit. the fuck you Aye. want. Aye. So I think that's why that exists to an extent. Now, when I watch these oh, shows does it? like Vikings and like the history, see when you look at the history of like how brutal we were as as human beings going through the the Dark Ages, the fucking Roman Empire, and all that sort of stuff, it's mad and it's bizarre. But religion started to grow more and more and more. And I just I don't know personally. That's why I was turned away from it because I was like, how can there be so many different views? On the same and they're, thing, they're, and they all think they all think they're real. That I, they all that, think they all think they're legit. Yeah, but this one's so different for that one. That's what I've always. That's what's always confused me. But I'll go. I like that and that, and I like that view and that. But I don't like that view and that. I don't like that view and that. Yeah. I'm like, where? And I know if you're in a religion, you're not meant to like every single view, but you're meant to follow every point. I think I don't know. For for me, the older that I get, I'm, well, I was very much like you, were very strong on nah. There's, there's no God, there's no, but, like, I don't believe when it, in... when it comes to that, I don't think being religious and spiritual in any way is bad because it, it gives you a structure to your life. But this is why I'm thinking, like, I don't know if I'll ever change my mind, but I think there is value of spiritual practices or some sort of religious practice in your life for the reason that you said that I don't know why we're here, I don't know what happens when we get after, I don't think anything happens because I think for a lot of people... When you when you really sit on that, it can be quite scary. Scary as fuck. So me. I think if there's the, uh, maybe you know, use the term the carrot dangled of an afterlife or whatever or of a purpose, I think there's there's practices in religion that 
sometimes I find myself, I've been to, been to Mass and um, Jillian's Catholic and family's Catholic and I've seen that side of things and then obviously like just meeting different people in life from different religious backgrounds and I'm like, wow, there's actually much more value than that than someone who's just sitting there going fuck everything like you know what I mean so I don't know it's interesting I would never say no I don't but don't, I think I used to be that guy oh fuck it fuck it fuck it no it's like I can completely understand why people we used to fight them like Colt Ness aye, and Aiden's aye, high school aye, aye, aye. we used to go like, Catholic bastard aye, fuck, aye. Fuck that's, what, that's what it used to Honestly, be that's, but that's, well, there's an element in Rangers and Celtics why that's a thing just now yeah, dirty pro day but bastard. religion is dying in Scotland I think I, th- I really think religion as a whole is probably down but Aye. I don't know how but then I th- then I see things in the states and some people that I've just met in life the states are a lot bigger though no, no, a big, no, bigger what, on they're, it. what they're doing is like I've met people similar age to me and they're going to church but mm. church is a concert ah, it's, yeah. it's ah, more yeah. youthful like I, the, the biggest problem I have with religion just now is it's too old fashioned the fact that I had to get a black pen from a priest to sign a bit of paper and it had to be a specific pen Aye. or a specific um, colour or a marriage wouldn't they be seen as valid Aye. blew my mind I was like it is 2023 <laughs> come on to fuck Aye. the fact that I had to walk down and hand the paper into the post office to show them it was me again I'm going get with the times man like I feel there's, there's just pockets of technology has projected our, our culture so far in advance and we should be using that as a tool so like when I see things like that in America I'm thinking oh, you know what they've got that, that would probably captivate because it's community. It's, it's all the things that I could probably buy into, like Aye. going down with all your friends or your family and Aye. Um, a wee bit of entertainment. Brings everybody together. Aye. They're speaking about whatever and then, aye, it's just interesting. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Well, <laughs> should we wrap it up? Aye, we wrap it up. <laughs> that is, we went on that whole Right. Yeah. Well, there we go. Another episode. Was that episode? 56. Six, aye, 56. 56. They're flying through that. That was a... Uh, if anybody's listening there and don't agree with anything that he said, like leave a wee comment and say what your opinion is, say what your religion is and why you believe in it. Like we would like, we would love to hear that. Like we are no I'm no set that I would never believe in anything and I would I would go against everything. I'm I would go I, as, I would go as far as saying we're probably both at a stage where we're pretty naive to a lot of stuff. Very naive, very because naive. Because our focus and energy has been into health and fitness. <laughs> health and fitness. But mate. this is what I'm saying, there's elements in those where I'm like, you know what, that actually would lead to a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. That, that I would, sort of I would thing. Look, so, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, this is why we started the podcast. Eh? It is, it to is. learn, to educate, to grow. Aye. Here we get in. <laughs> here, we, here we get into it. What was I going to say there? Um, so let's wrap up there then. If you are watching on Spotify, head over to the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave us a comment. This is the best way that you can support the channel. And um, we do this for completely free. We make no money whatsoever. So the best way, if you've enjoyed this episode or enjoy your podcast, the best way you can support us is by leaving us a five star review, subscribing, commenting, and liking. So we would very much appreciate it. If Absolutely. You do that. Absolutely. Right. We'll see you until next. What's your line? I don't know. (laughs) Have a nice one. Catch you later.